Welcome to The Teacher's Story. I'm Jackie Scully. This is a podcast to elevate teacher voice. In this program, you will hear teachers sharing their journey into this profession and their ideas for education. I'm kicking it off Teacher Appreciation Week, which starts May 2nd. This is about honest, vulnerable, inspiring storytelling. It's a time and a space for teachers to share their ideas for the future of education. Teachers are beautiful beings who give their heart and soul to their community. They're innovators, they're inspirational, not only to children, but to the people around them. And they deserve to share their voice. So welcome to The Teacher's Story, enjoy. Hi, welcome to The Teacher's Story. I am Jackie Scully, and today we have Katherine Karyanis with us. She is an art teacher and has her business, The Preschool Art Expert. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited for this conversation because I don't have many uh, teachers on in the art field and particularly working with the little ones. And I'm a high school teacher. So I love (laughs) having conversations with those who are working with the little kids and especially in the art field. I think it's just great to talk about creativity and how kids can express themselves. So I'm very excited about this conversation. Yeah, thank you, Jackie. Thank you for inviting me today. I'm I'm really glad to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, was there a singular moment or someone in your life that inspired you to get into education or work with kids or what was kind of those beginning stages? Well, there was really not any one particular moment. I think it was kind of an evolution. When I was growing up, my father and stepmother had a childcare center. And then later they expanded and they had two centers. So from a very young age, I have been around children and I always just had a real liking for the young ones, like two and three years old. And um, in the morning, all of the children, I'm sure you've, you've been in classrooms like this, that all the children would congregate to the same room until their teacher got there. And then they would all go where they were supposed to go with their teachers. So in the mornings, I would sit with them and they had a a puzzle table and we would work puzzles. And I remember this one little boy in particular, I still remember his name and exactly what he looked like. He was a little Hispanic child. He had dark skin and this real pretty curly black hair. And his, his name was Rob. And I remember we were sitting there working this puzzle and I was showing him how to put these wooden puzzle pieces where they belonged. And so, you know, he would learn and he would move one and he would move the other. And I just remember watching him and being so fascinated with what's going on in his mind to make him understand what happens here. So I had this real fascination and this real curiosity about how children learn. And I remember once he put this puzzle together by himself, how excited he was and how excited I was. So I think that the curiosity and the fascination with watching kind of set that in motion, even though I might not have been aware of it at the time. And so it just kind of makes sense that I ended up in the teaching field and especially working with preschoolers. Mm, I love that story. Yeah, it's the <laughs> light bulb moment. You know, when you see a kid get it, it's yeah. uh, magic. You just feel yeah. like I'm here witnessing that. And that mm-hmm. is really neat. And I love the idea that you were curious about kind of like the brain and how like, you know, they're processing and that child development, because that's very much like what pulled me into just like, what is it like, what is it about the learning process? Like, how is that actually happening so that's really cool right yeah Yeah. what was uh your early teaching experience like do you have any like stories or aha moments or something that was really challenging or a takeaway from like those beginning years so um I'm not sure that I really had an aha moment but there is something that stands out in my mind and um my first year I was teaching in Kentucky and I had a high school class And this boy would come in every day and he would sit at the table and he would pull his sketchbook out and he would sketch and he would make these beautiful drawings, just beautiful and colorful. And he didn't bother anybody. You know, he was, he was friendly, but he wasn't like real, real social. You know how some people are, have their friends and they chat. He was quiet and he, 
he just sat there and, and sketched the whole time. And one day administration came to my room and they were asking me if I was having any troubles with him. And I said, well, no. So then I found out that he wasn't doing well in his other classes. And I found out that he had been in some trouble. And I was really surprised because in my room, the art room, he did well. So I think the thing for me was really grasping that sometimes creative people don't necessarily fit into that normal, um, that normal mold that we think everybody should fit into. But if you give them the right environment, they can thrive. Because mm -hmm. he, he was always great in my classroom. I couldn't understand what the problem was. Yeah, and I think you're right that there needs to be a fostering of that because we still have a lot of boxes that we, you know, put kids into. And something about like excelling in art, but doing maybe poorly in the other subjects, it mm -hmm. seems like it's always a focus on, well, you're not doing well in the sciences or math or you know, you're writing and they don't focus on, but you're doing well in the arts. <laughs> and yes. so I think there needs to be this, um, you know, equal way of looking at the subjects. Like it's not just that the sciences are going to be the most important and then the humanities and then like mm -hmm. arts down here, mm -hmm. but they are all important subjects and everyone has different skills. So, you know, we should be elevating that child and saying, look at this amazing art you're creating. You're in Yes, I agree. Yeah. And not, and yet you have a challenging subject over here, but then this is something you excel in. We always go right to the uh, negative, mm -hmm. right? This is where you're struggling. And we're not really going to talk about the success you're having in art class. <laughs> like right. that language and how we talk to kids needs to change because then <laughs> um, that's how they frame who they are in their brain. Yes. Like they frame like, I'm a poor student and I just happen to really be good at art. Instead Absolutely. of I am an artist, I am a creator and mm -hmm. I struggle in math. Right. Flip it. You gotta flip it around. <laughs> yeah. And I I this is obviously a subject that I could talk about all day. So yeah, I'm sure, especially being <laughs> yeah. in the arts, because I, I hear it from our art teachers at our school too. Um, so the pandemic happens, and I think this is when your business is starting, right? Do you want to get into kind of the pandemic time and how that was for you um, starting this business or just kind of all yes. around? So, um, so the pandemic for me um, <clears throat> wasn't really all that much different than it was for a lot of people that I know, because at the time I was a private nanny for a family. So because I was considered an essential worker, I continued to work every day where some of my friends were not working or were working from home. So they were completely isolated, but I was going to work every day. So that kept me in a normal routine and I, I kept my sense of normalcy. And um, being a creative person and always having a project or something going on, once I got home, it was really not a lot different because I either had a painting or a drawing or I was writing or even rearranging furniture in a room just something going on. And that was okay for a while. Um, but, but after a while it did bother me. And I, so I was glad when restrictions were lifted and we could socialize again, but yes, it was a time when I was just publishing my first book, which I'm actually getting ready to republish updated, but I published it the very same week that they announced the pandemic and everything closed down. <laughs> mm. So it was not really a great time to publish, but at the same time, if I had known more about how to market and promote, it might've been a really good time. Mm. So, yeah, I think, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, because I think in a way, I hear this about the pandemic, if you were already in an online platform type of either school business something in media then it was mm -hmm. like bam the pandemic just helped your business right right with something thinking of like 
I want to go on book tours. I want to share my book. I want to go to libraries. I want to something like that. You're like, that feels like it would halt it. But if you were, you're saying like maybe working with like a marketing team that could help with like the online space with that, yes. right? Then it could have, yeah. But those are things now that we know where whenever you're creating something, you can have an online space and now we can be back in person too. So now it's like using both to kind of- Yes, yes. Yeah. And is this where you um, created the business that you have, the preschool art expert? And tell us a little bit about that. So yes, so- so my background, you just heard about my background. So I've been working with children pretty much my entire life and focusing on the preschool child. And what I found was um, I, I found a need. I found a need for the book that I wrote. And what brought that about is partially working in an open classroom. And I was the pre-K teacher at the time. And there was a three-year-old teacher next to me. And I remember looking over the shelf one day and seeing her sitting at her table and she was all stressed out and she was trying to get these projects put together for all these children. And she had about three or four children sitting at the table with her and they all looked like they were bored and, and were so frustrated and why am I sitting here? And I just thought it shouldn't be like this. So I thought these teachers need a resource. And because I had spent so much time in the preschool area and my background is art, I thought I'm going to write this book to help them, not only them, but also parents, because I would constantly hear, I want my child to learn art. And in the very next breath, I would hear, I don't know anything about art. So it's really for the preschool teacher and the parents. And I want to even expand that more and go into maybe higher education um, colleges, because I think this book could definitely help teachers who are going into that field, especially in early education, mm -hmm. especially the ones who are not, you know, they don't have to take art or they don't know anything about art. It's really easy to follow and it's comprehensive and it does a lot of things. It's, um, the one thing that I think stands out in this book is that with every single project, there's an accompanying activity. And I made that accompanying activity because I think that we don't relate art every day to what's going on around us every day. And I think we can. And I want people to see that art relates to everything. It, it's often just put off in this corner by itself and, and people think that it doesn't relate to anything, but it does. And I'm here to tell you that it does. So in the book, with every project, there's an accompanying activity that makes that real world connection mm. to show children how art relates to their daily lives. And I'm just going to give you one quick example. So let's say we are learning red and, and in the preschool years, that's when they're learning their colors. Well, I've taught enough preschool to preschool children to learn, to know that they can not only learn their colors, but they can put their colors into groups. And this group is the one called the primary colors. And these are the three colors, red, blue, and yellow that go into that group. So let's say that we're learning the primary colors and we're driving and mom or dad stops at a stop sign. Well, that stop sign is red and it's also a geometric shape. So now we're also relating art to math and geometry. So I also show you how to relate it to other subjects. That's great. I love that. And to see it Thank in you. the real world, especially as like a little kid and even yeah. to get into maybe like the questions of like, well, why is a stop sign red? Right. Or right. like, why does red mean stop? Like on right. a, you know, a traffic light. I think that you can really get into the meaning behind yes. the colors too. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. So have you, um, do you have any like feedback or testimonials from parents or teachers who have used your program and sharing like their feedback about how it's working for them? I, I have had teachers, they love the book. They've told me the book is very well written. And at the time there, um, there wasn't a lot of funds to go into the book. So I did everything myself and I'm doing everything myself on the update also, only because I know that I can now. But um, it will be an improvement. So I'm really happy that 
it's going to turn out the way it is. And if they liked the first one, they'll like the second one. And I hope to learn a little bit more about promoting to get this one out in front of more people. <clears throat> yeah, I think even going and maybe speaking with like superintendents, right, in school districts and saying, yes. can I put on maybe like a professional development for your preschool or in your teacher, your art teachers to see how they maybe can use this. That would be a great way to get it into schools. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about, um, cause this is coming out soon. So you don't have to give it all away, but a little preview <laughs> of what those updates or what you have in this uh, new version. Okay. So the new book is going to be titled introduction to art. So simple. Everyone can remember it. It says exactly what it is, but it's introduction to art for toddlers and preschoolers. So not only that, the cover will be changed because now that I've been doing workshops out in the preschools, I have more photographs to put on the mm -hmm. cover and on the interior pages. So the cover is going to be updated, the title will be updated, and the interior pages are going to be updated with more children's photographs and more color. And um, the wording will be tweaked just a little bit. It's mostly the same information, but it's most it's mainly just a beautification of the book that exists already. Yeah, I love that. I think including pictures of students actually working yes. and creating their own piece of art is going to be very appealing on the cover yes. too, because they're drawn into seeing what these, these kids are actually making. Um, this is really exciting. I'm so excited <laughs> for you to launch this. But Thank yes, you. get it into schools, talk to teachers yeah. and superintendents, principals. I'm sure yeah. they would be really excited. I think we need to foster the arts. So I don't know if there's anything you want to just talk about in general about art education or how you would love to see this, you know, um, be amplified in schools or how we can go about doing that. So really the only, I'm just going to kind of add to uh, what I'm doing. So I've started doing some consulting and I have a consulting package. And basically what that does is it helps directors and preschool teachers set up their art program. And there are a lot of different things that it covers, not just the lessons, but how to set up your classroom. And what do we do if, say, we have a group that's going to the art table to do art. And what if we have this one child who doesn't want to do art that day or doesn't like art? What do we do with that child? Because it's not just the teaching part, especially in those years. It's also, um, you have to manage your classroom and not mm -hmm. every child is gonna to wanna to do the same thing at the same time. So there has to be an area where they can go. And then we also have to have an area for the children who finish early. If they finish early, hey, there's this really cool area over here and I can play with these toys that relate to art. So it's different things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, classroom management's a big part of it. And you have many kids in front of you and even some teachers, even at the preschool level might have like 20 kids in front of them and they're all going to have various motivations and needs and you have to yes to manage it you want to foster one kid who's like really into it and then one you have to pay attention to because they're like I just don't want to do it and you're like right teachers need clones <laughs> well we need and here's multiple. where here's where I like to bring up let's see how many volunteers we can get in that classroom mm. because if we have you know I've been a preschool teacher and I know what it's like. I'm not speaking as someone who doesn't know what that classroom is like. I know I've been with every age. So I know what the classroom is like. And I know that there are volunteers out there. There are grandparents, there are parents, there are older sisters, There's there are aunts, uncles, people we know in the community. Let's get people in there who can help. Maybe retired teachers who love the field and just want to be there because they're now retired and and they don't have to work, but they still want to be in the classroom. Yeah. I think that we need to utilize these people to help these preschool teachers. And they're out there. Yeah, I think so. And I think in the community, you if you went and you said, we need some extra help in the classroom, I bet you would get so many people who'd want to do that, particularly, like you said, they're retirees. Yes. They're like, I just want to be around kids. Like, right. I could imagine being like, older and if I didn't want to like you know work work but like I still wanted to be around schools and kids like that would be a wonderful opportunity to go into a preschool and for me like I teach high school so I can envision 
in my elder years being like, I want to work with the little kids now because I was with yeah. like, the teenagers for <laughs> so long. I, I mean, every time I'm in a preschool or kindergarten classroom, I'm just, I just love observing. I just want to be there and, mm-hmm. and observe them play and how they're engaged. And I yeah. think it's a really great, great point is that there are um, so many possibilities to get volunteers in the classroom and help the teachers and the teachers can spend more time on their craft and really right. creating that environment and their lessons that they want to do. So the management piece is kind of taken care of by having more hands. That's yes. Awesome. And, and I think that's a big piece and, and any preschool teacher will probably tell you, I need some help. Yeah. And then, you know, a lot of them spend nap time trying to do lesson plans and <laughs> I don't like that because nap time needs to be spent on nap time because in that classroom, not every one of those children is going to nap and they need your attention. Yeah. I know. I know. That's a great point too, because, um, you know, I get my free periods where I'm, I'm free. I mean, mm-hmm. I usually have like a bunch of things to do and have meetings, but when you're in the preschool, kindergarten, even some of the lower elementary school, you're with those kids all day long. Mm-hmm. You don't, yes. you don't get a break. The only break you probably get right. is when, I guess when they're a little bit older, they go to like their special programs, but yeah, <laughs> no, all day long. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for mentioning that. So yeah, schools need to ask for volunteers and not be scared to do that. I'm sure people would, would be doing that if they, uh, the school needs, you know, some extra hands. Yes, absolutely. You. Yeah. Well, this has been so wonderful. I love sharing about your background in art education and your program. Definitely get it into schools (laughs) because I think that the teachers would love it, right? Um, I love that you also work with parents and that way you're also, you're promoting the arts. Like we need to keep this in schools. I know when I was first teaching and No Child Left Behind, there were a lot of schools who were like the failing or restructuring schools. The first thing that they were cutting was the art program. And it always, and that's what I'm, that's what I, that's what I want to be a voice of art. If you do any research online, you can see how important arts are. It, you can see it benefits children in so many ways, not just the the obvious, which with the young children would be the fine motor skills Mm -hmm. and learning different things, which helps them learn to do other things in other subjects. But it's also it, it decreases absenteeism. It helps them with math and science. It helps with social skills. There are just so many things. And that's what I'm trying to. Those are the points I'm trying to get across. Yeah. And not only that, but it is really part of your everyday life. Yeah, it really is. Mm-hmm. And it's also about seeing the beauty in life when we have a lot of things in the world going on right now where people mm-hmm. feel very disconnected. They feel very like unsure about the future and what's going on. There's, there's the heaviness, you know, yes, Art brings back the beauty mm-hmm. and really being able to express yourself and kids can, you know, anything can be art. The idea of when you know, kids or even I used to say like, oh, I'm not an artist. I can't draw, but art's not just about drawing. It could be <laughs> photography. It could be just creating pottery or whatever that is. It's creation. And That's right. it allows you to really, again, see the beauty in the world and create something new. Um, I think it can really help kids self-esteem, you know, if they Absolutely. create something and they're proud of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah really important. Where can um, my listeners find you? You want to give any information about, you know, your website or LinkedIn or anything like that? Yes. So they can go to the preschoolartexpert.com and there will be information there. And I'm constantly going in there and updating things and putting new information on. And right there, there's a it says that the book is being updated, but the other one is still available on Amazon and it will probably continue to be available for a while, even after the next one is published. Great. Thank you so much. This has been such a joy. Um, And yes, let's keep promoting the arts. And I love that, the idea that you're helping teachers too. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.